Meatloaf was one of the world's most successful musicians, so how did he go broke at the height of his fame? Before Meatloaf, aka Marvin Lee Day, was rock music's most warbly vibrato, he started off as a bouncer after leaving school and fleeing to Los Angeles in 1967. A self-proclaimed outcast, Meatloaf started his first band, Meatloaf Soul, around this time before finding kindred spirits in musical theater for his hammy, over-the-top performances. He landed a role in the show Hair, which went to Broadway and from there worked on the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which defied the odds and went on to earn $112 million since its release. It was then that Meatloaf recorded one of history's all-time best-selling records, Bat Outta Hell. Released in 1977, the record is the number three best-selling album of all time, at 43 million copies sold beaten only by Michael Jackson's Thriller and ACDC's Back in Black. It stayed at number one for almost 400 weeks straight and consistently sold hundreds of thousands of copies every year in the time since its release. So how is it possible that in 1983, a mere six years after its release, Meatloaf filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy? As Meatloaf himself said in his autobiography, As Bat got bigger, I got crazier. It was like some terrible curse where everything I'd ever wished for turned into a nightmare, and it was rapidly turning me into a maniac. He discovered cocaine, and as he started falling apart, his relationship with his musical partner, Jim Steinman, disintegrated. Meatloaf saw himself as the actor, with Steinman as the playwright, and the two had collaborated to bring Bat Outta Hell to light. But things went downhill from 1978 to 1984, when Meatloaf lost Steinman, strained his voice, experienced severe depression, and was finally sued by Steinman over the rights to their music. The legal battle added up to a whopping 45 lawsuits worth $80 million in total. Facing financial pressure, the only choice Meatloaf had was to file for bankruptcy. Meatloaf and Steinman would eventually reconcile and come back together for 1993's Bad Outta Hell 2, Back Into Hell, which contained the mega-hit opera rock anthem I'd Do Anything For Love, But I Won't Do That. Though the two reconciled professionally, the lawsuits delayed the delivery of all the royalties that Meatloaf was supposed to receive from his record sales. It wasn't until 1997 that the royalties finally made their way to him. Riding a wave of career rebirth, Meatloaf spent the 1990s clawing his way back to the top. While his appearance in the Spice Girls movie may not have been a real high point, he had roles and cameos in more critically acclaimed cinematic fare like 1992's Wayne's World and 1999's Fight Club. He also appeared at the beginning of Tenacious D in The Pick of Destiny, playing Jack Black's father even belting out a few lines in the movie's opening song, Kickapoo, in 2006. Meanwhile, he still had a foot in the world of music and continued to put out albums and toured extensively. He released a series of albums including Bad Out of Hell 3 in 2006, Hang Cool Teddy Bear in 2010, and Hell in a Handbasket in 2011. All of this was accomplished in spite of chronic health issues that threatened to undo much of the work Meatloaf had done in effort to rebuild his career. In 2003, Meatloaf collapsed on stage during a performance in London. Doctors subsequently diagnosed him with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, which is known to cause an irregular heartbeat. In 2016, he collapsed on stage again, this time in Edmonton, Alberta. This time, his management released a statement chalking the health crisis up to dehydration. When the legend passed away on January 20, 2022, no cause of death was immediately announced. He was 74 years old. Meatloaf has a well-deserved place in music history, not just for what he accomplished as an artist, but for the major obstacles that he overcame along the way.